following interview was conducted with Syed M. Gaffer, President, Professor Emeritus of Veterinary Parasitology for the Purdue University Oral History Program. It took place on October the 29th, 2009 at his residence in West Lafayette. The interviewer is Catherine Marquis, the Oral History Librarian. Welcome and good afternoon and thank you. Thank you. Start by telling us where you were born and your parents in early years. Okay. Uh, I was born in Egypt uh, in January 18, 1924. Uh, my father uh, started out to be a school teacher when I was very small, and uh, he did not have college education, and uh, he saw the writing on the wall that, uh, in Egypt that he's not going to go much further with high school education. So he uh, took another job and was working for the customs in Alexandria. Uh, I went to uh, grade school in El Arish in Sinai Peninsula uh, for grade school. Then I went to uh, high school or what they call secondary school in, a, uh, in, in Tanta, Egypt. Uh, I, I was a, a boarding student there for, for three years, uh, but then my father uh, changed jobs from the teaching school in El Arish to uh, Alexandria, and I had two years of uh, uh, secondary school in Alexandria, Egypt. Uh, then after that, I... Uh, went to uh, veterinary school in Cairo, Egypt, with uh, Fouad University, it was called Fouad University, but now it's called, it was the only university uh, in Egypt at that time. Uh, and there was only one veterinary school, that's where I went. Uh, the class that I went with was the very first class that uh, changed from a four-year veterinary school curriculum to five-year veterinary school curriculum. So I took my uh, first year of college in the, uh, the College of Science. That's where the pre-vets took. Uh, uh, then I went to the veterinary school and it was the change between the four-year curriculum and the five-year curriculum and they ended up with having only four other students with me, so my class was very small. Uh, what was the school like? Tell us a little about the school. Uh, the school Because you said it was the only university at that time in, in the country? In the country. It was the only university in the country, and it was the only uh, veterinary school. Did they have any other professional, did they have undergraduate and graduate and professional schools? Well, they didn't mm -hmm. have, well, much of a graduate school, it was mostly undergraduate. Okay. The, the graduates, uh, the graduate school was uh, not very much uh, okay. in there. But then while I was going through the, uh, the Fouad University, they, uh, they had opened another university in Cairo, which was called the Heliopolis University. So they have two uh, there. Then after that, they have several universities now, as far as I, uh, as far as I can tell. Sure. Uh, then, uh, after graduation, from there, we had a uh, a. You disease. had a class of five or something in your class. <laughs> Actually, we ended up having a class of four. One of them dropped out. You know, so. Look at uh, that personalized attention you got. We sure did. That that was absolutely right. We, we, we were just a small class. We were very close to the dean. We were close close to the professors and uh, the teaching there uh, was obviously was in 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 English all the way through. Uh, in fact, uh, uh, my physiology professor was uh, a, a Dr. Wilson. He was a, a graduate. Uh, from Oxford University many, many years before he was an old man when I saw him. 
uh, and just a, a nice uh, thing to say about that man is uh, because there are only four of us in class at the end of the year, he gave each one of us a box of chocolate. <laughs> so well, that, that was very, yeah. very nice. But then after, I gra after graduation, as I said, uh, at that time it was uh, during World War II, and we had uh, what, we, what they called the South African horse sickness that started down from the southern part of Egypt all the way out. By the time I graduated, uh, the horses uh, and mules and donkeys, uh, they were dying like flies out there. And it was a virus disease. We had no idea what to do because we did not have vaccine for it. The only vaccine that we could get was from the uh, the South African uh, 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 lab in South Africa. In South Africa, those were the only. That was the only place that made the vaccine, and we had to start raising mice and start, uh, uh, you know, getting uh, equipment to make vaccine was, out there. So <laughs> one of the things was our uh, uh, veterinary uh, well, director out there <laughs> went to get a vaccine and he asked them, you know, to, they asked the, uh, uh, the, the commanding officer of the, of the uh, army if he would uh, let him have a, a, a plane to get horse vaccine. <laughs> He wouldn't agree to that. He said, "I have more urgent, uh, <laughs> you know, reason than than have vaccine brought out from South Africa for horses." You know, well, I mean, he said, he actually told him, "Listen, I'm fighting a war. Uh, I, I I can't spare a, a, a an airplane for that." You see. Well, anyway, uh, when were I were they not able to ship any? Well, th that was the only. W how right. do they ship it? Right. That's right. Right. I mean, that was right. during the war. It right. was a completely different situation. Sure. Well, of course, uh, uh, you know, after that, uh, well, they geared up, and, it was, and within about three years, they started producing vaccine, and that was okay. But when I graduated, uh, uh, I started working with, uh, a, uh, you know, all the veterinarians were needed to fight that for horses. The only way we could uh, 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 fight the disease is destroy the, uh, the, the uh, sick animals, you know. Right. So, but anyway, that, that's a, a, a big, uh, well, it was a big problem. And, but then after they started vaccinating, everything was much better and, uh, and we were released. So I worked, uh, after that, I worked on uh, vaccinating uh, some cattle against uh, pneumonia and uh, then after that I, uh, I was appointed as a veterinarian in a big uh, uh, plantation uh, which was essentially f to reclaim land from the Mediterranean so uh, I was a veterinarian taking care of uh, uh, cattle uh, that uh, pulled uh, uh, farm equipment because they were washing the land that they were reclaiming from the Mediterranean, that salty land, you know. So I was taking care of about, oh, maybe uh, between 1,500 and 2,000 uh, animals. They were all draft, draft uh, animals because they couldn't use tractors, they would get stuck in the mud, right, you know. Yeah. So they were using animals, and that's where I worked. Then I worked there for a couple of years. Then I went to the university. Well, no, I went to the, uh, uh, it was called Diagnostic Laboratory, the Veterinary Diagnostic Laboratory in Giza, 
uh, across the river from Cairo. I worked there for a while, and the professor of parasitology the medical, in the medical school uh, came to me and asked me if uh, I wanted to come work with him, which I agreed, and I was, I was teaching uh, in the medical school. I was teaching parasitology to medical students in, in the only university <laughs> in, in the country, you know. Uh, then then the, uh, uh, the, the government had some scholarships, so I took uh, an application to the, the, the uh, Minister of Agriculture, and I was selected for parasitology and to come to the United States as in a mission. And I went to Kansas State University. Uh, so Let me I ask you before you get to Kansas, what was it like during World War II in your country? Well, you were in school at that time. Yeah, I was in uh -huh. school at that time, right? Yeah. Uh, uh, the the. Uh, Did you have rationing like we had here? Oh yeah, we had oh severe had, rationing. You had stamp. We had we had stamps. You know, we had. We, we had yeah, ration. we got we got cards and okay. they marked the cards okay. for you, but uh, meat we couldn't buy meat uh, every day. We could buy meat only three times a, a week. You see. Uh, sugar was rationed, uh, gas was rationed, uh, gasoline, uh, well, kerosene uh, you know, was rationed uh, because they heated with uh, kerosene. Uh, and, uh, oh, it was very, uh, well, you know, really hard. very strict. Right. But because the German army came within a few miles from Alexandria, you know, you're, the town is called El Alamein. Remember El Alamein. Uh, so it was. Uh, mm, I've was about it, that. It was very difficult yeah. time at that time. Was it hard on your family too? Your parents? Did he continue working during that time? Oh your yes. Okay. Oh yes. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. We continued. It was very hard, you know. But anyway, it uh, after. Now you know, you're coming to Kansas State. How did you happen to? to how did you happen to pick Kansas State? Did you have to? Well, Did you have a choice? It, uh, yeah. Oh. Well, I didn't have a choice actually. Okay. Uh, it was on the recommendations of uh, uh, an Egyptian man who worked at the uh, at the Egyptian embassy in Washington D.C. He was the one. They said we want somebody to study parasitology, from, and he asked around and he recommended Dr. James Ackert. Uh, at, uh, at Kansas State University, and I wrote to him, and he accepted me, and, and I came to uh, to Kansas State University. Yeah. That was, what was your like? At, what was your depression the first time you got there? It's different than when, <laughs> where you'd been. Well, uh, I mean that's out in the field, you know. Uh, that's open country. <laughs> oh, it, it was. I sure. I, uh, uh, I had to take uh, the did train. You? Obviously, you know that was. Uh, Where did you back. land? Did you fly over and then they take a train? No, uh, no. Oh, I had to, uh, of course, you know, a ship to New York. Oh, okay, you came by ship. And and then train to Washington D.C. to meet the people uh, of the Egyptian embassy, and then I took uh, a train from from Washington D.C. to Manhattan, Kansas. I had no idea where Manhattan, Kansas is. <laughs> Finally, ended up there and. Uh, uh, didn't know anything. I had a. a, a Did sushi. somebody meet you? Nobody met met me. It was the middle of the night. I arrived there. <laughs> you know, I had no idea. <laughs> there what I to, am. You know. Yeah, here I am. I went to the uh, uh, hotel. Uh, you know. Then the next morning, got up and I started asking the people. It was Sunday. <laughs> All right. I couldn't even find a, a restaurant to eat. You know. <laughs> that was. It was Welcome great. to the U.S. Right. Yeah, that was quite. <laughs> so finally, I ended up in Manhattan, Kansas. You know, uh, uh, <clears throat> uh, then on 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 Monday, I went and, and met Doctor Ackert, and of course, you know, uh, uh, the usual finding place to live and so on. Mm -hmm. But then one of the other traumatic things was uh, uh, about uh, two days after that, 
I developed a fever of about 103 <laughs> degrees, you know, and uh, I went to the uh, to the hospital at Kansas State, you know. <clears throat> My skin was red as a beet, and I had a fever, uh, and they thought uh, I had a very uh, a severe transmissible disease, so they put me on quarantine, so I couldn't even see anybody. <laughs> so anyway, uh, what did it turn out to be, though? Was it? As it turned out to be, I I had not been in Alexandria. You know, I'd lived in Alexandria for a long time, and I had many friends there, and that was in September. And I went to the beach, and I got burned to a crisp because I did not. I had not been in the uh, in the sun for you know for, for several years you know and all my friends oh welcome and so on so we uh, went around but uh, uh, the doctor there thought I had I had some kind of exotic disease <laughs> I did not know anybody finally somebody took <coughs> you know took uh, you know pity on me. And they told uh, some of the students, you know, from from Egypt. Well, there was only one guy from Egypt, and there were several guys from Palestine at that time, and so on. So uh, uh, it, uh, somebody said, "Your uh, your country compatriot is in the hospital." Who? Uh, then a few of them tried to contact me, but they wouldn't let them. Finally, when they let me, those people came, and, and it was okay, you know, after that. But then, uh, went on, and, and uh, uh, it was... You got your, you went for your, you got your master's there, didn't you? I got, I got my master's, and I got my PhD, PhD. Okay. from there, you know. Uh, what was your area of, of uh, in uh, parasitology? In parasitology, okay. with Dr. James Ackert, you know, he was the professor of, uh, of parasitology and the dean of the graduate school at that time. He was holding dual positions, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, it was yeah. Well, we called him, we called him Daddy, Daddy Ackert. <laughs> yeah, uh, but you know had uh, had. Uh, uh, you know, finally, when I got my PhD, that was in 1950. All right. I came in 47, and uh, 1950, I got my degree, went back. Uh, to Egypt? Went back to oh. Egypt, yeah. I got, I got married uh, uh, to my first did you wife. Meet, did you meet her uh, in Egypt or in Kansas State? No, I, I, no, I met... I met her actually in uh, uh, in Michigan. While uh, you were studying in the United States. While, while I was studying, well, that, during that summer, one of the professors uh, at uh, Kansas State said for me to have a couple of courses. They didn't teach those courses at Kansas State. He said, "I know where you can get them at the University of Michigan in, in Ann Arbor." Well, actually, I went to. Uh, uh, summer school of the University of Michigan, which was way up north, you know, in Ann Arbor, Douglas Lake. Is it oh. oh, okay. Uh, and uh, I had a couple of courses there. Uh, and during that time, while I was driving, uh, uh, my wife was with her parents. She is from Kansas, and they were visiting Ann Arbor, where she was. And that's where we met, where, with her parents, you know, I stopped and uh, drank coffee with them and, you know, got to know her. But then, after I got married, we went back to Egypt and stayed there for about uh, a year and three months, you know. What did you do while you were there? Were you working? I was, I was working in the, uh, in the uh, diagnostic laboratory. In Egypt, you know, in in Giza, Egypt, you know. Uh, then uh, I decided to uh, to come to the United States, and I applied, and 
we came, uh, uh, one side item <laughs> uh, interesting to tell, you know, uh, while we were there, my wife, of course, was American, and uh, she had a, a visa for six months. Well, after six months, we had to renew the visa. So I went to renew it. She said, why do you want to renew it? Because I'm married. If I'm married, show us, uh, you know, certificate, a marriage certificate. So I produced the Nebraska uh, certificate of marriage, and the judge looked at it. He said, what's this? That's not a marriage certificate. You better get married here. So, so we got married again. <laughs> Now you got two, huh? Yeah, we're here. But anyway, uh, these are the, you know, the side things. That's nice, though. So, yeah. yeah. But then, uh, and uh, you know, and it's written uh, in a little uh, uh, different way than the marriage certificate here. It was uh, there. It was uh, you know, uh, love and obey. <laughs> and it, it was never, you know, accepted by my first wife. But anyway, I always threatened her with that. <laughs> See what it says? It's in Pat's on paper, right? Yeah. <laughs> you signed it. Yeah. Well, yeah, you said you signed it, you know. But right. anyway, uh, well, anyway, decided to come back and came back uh, uh, to the United States, mm -hmm. ended up in New York. Uh, and uh, ended up in New York, and I spent all of the money that I could change from Egyptian pounds to dollars. I spent them in during the trip by ship from, you know, Beirut to Athens to to uh, Naples, Italy, and then uh, New York. Most of that money was gone. So we, the both of us arrived in New York with six, no, six or seven dollars to our name in New York City. And we had, we had about like 1,500 pounds of luggage <laughs> in there, you know. But anyway, these are the side things that uh, you remember. No credit cards, just cash, right? No, we didn't have any oh, credit no, cards or anything at that time. Finally, uh, I had to... I had to call my wife's parents, you know, they had some of our money, so they sent us some money and, and, and we, sure. got, we got by, yeah. yeah. But anyway, uh, went to Kansas for a while, and then uh, I was looking for a job. I got a, a, a job in, in Dallas, Texas with uh, Dr. Charles Steger. Uh, hospital, and it's called, it was called Rutherford Hospital uh, in Dallas, Texas, and, and I worked there from uh, from 1951 in, uh, let's see, yeah, 51 in December 51. We arrived there between uh, uh, Thanksgiving and Christmas. Yeah, and uh, <coughs> I, I worked there until in, at, with Dr. Rutherford until uh, 1954. Yeah, till 1954. Uh, during that time, I tried to get a license to practice veterinary medicine because, you know, I was a foreign graduate. I had to get a license. Uh, at that time, the, uh, the American, the AVMA, did not recognize the uh, Egyptian veterinary school at that time. So I had to uh, apply and, uh, and get my American, I mean my uh, uh, Egyptian degree, Americanized. Well, anyway, <coughs> uh, I had to do that by going to Texas A&M, you know. So 
uh, I went to Texas A&M, talked to the, to the dean there, talked to the people, and they decided, yeah, they can do it. Uh, if I went there for uh, two semesters, uh, taking some clinical, I saw I, uh, the clinical year at that time, uh, I had to take at Texas A&M. Then by the time I finished that, I had to take uh, six hours of, uh, three hours of American history and three hours of Texas history for, for my degree to be Texas A&M. Finally, I, I finished those and I got a degree from Texas A&M. Mm -hmm. Did you have to take an exam to, to get your uh, license? Oh, well, then I had to take, of course, yeah. Oh, okay, I see. Then okay. I had to take an, to an exam. Okay. Of course, that was, that was another, uh, <laughs> well, I was, actually, I was instructor at, at, at Texas A&M when the next year they came and, uh, and we got, uh, <clears throat> we got the, uh, the state board of Texas. I had to take it. Uh, that was the first year that they woke up to the fact that they had to take an, a, a real exam because it, before that the students just did not study, did not recognize that they had to take a real exam, you know. Well, that was the first one and it made, well, my boss there, Dr. Dr. Turk, he, he wasn't very happy about it at all. I so wouldn't think so. Yeah. They're examining my students and all that. But anyway, that's another uh, situation. But finally, I got I got a uh, yeah. a, a license in to practice veterinary medicine in Texas. But by that time, I had had, you know, uh, a, uh, a BVSC, which is a Bachelor of Veterinary Science from Egypt. I had a master's from Kansas State. I had PhD. a PhD from Kansas State. Then I had to take a DVM from Texas A&M. And uh, that's, uh, uh, from then on, it, it was okay. Well, then uh, Dr. Turk uh, said, why don't you come, you know, be with us, you know, and teach at Texas A&M. So I started teaching at Texas A&M, you know. Uh, and I was there from, I graduated from Texas A&M in 1955. I, I'm a, yeah, I'm a 55 graduate of Texas A&M. And I was there until 58. And then 58, uh, 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 Dr. Hutchings, Pat Hutchings, was dean of the new veterinary school here. And he and, and uh, Dick Turk were good friends. He, I guess he, uh, he, he asked Dick, you know, who he'd recommend, and he recommended me, and I came, and, and uh, uh, Dr. Hutchings hired me for that. But to show how it is, I was the very first uh, veterinarian to come with a specific uh, appointment in the veterinary school. I was the first appointee in the veterinary school to come in. Uh, at that time, at that same time, the only other person that came with me then was Terry Curtin. He, he was in, in uh, uh, he was not for the vet school, but he was, uh, uh, what you call him, uh, uh, like, mm, well, anyway, uh, Curtin, Terry Curtin was not in, uh, a, for the vet school. Okay. You know. So you're the first appointee, that's great. I was the first appointee specifically for the vet school. For the vet school, coming from abroad. I imagine 
they had other people come in, and sure. there was a department of of, uh, of veterinary science for years, you know, sure. before that, and all of them came, you know, from Dr. Claflin and Dr. Getch and uh, were here, and Dr. Halterman were here, but they were, you know, they were already on board. Already on board, sure. you see. But I was the first one specifically for the vet school. For the vet school you see. Uh, so, uh, and it continued on, uh, but one of the things that I wanted to say when I came, uh, we were in the old building there, I guess uh, the vet pathology building, and uh, they uh, put me, <laughs> uh, well, I, I was a parasitologist, of course, and they wanted me to develop that area of parasitology completely from the base up, which, you know, a lot of people helped me with that, you know, from Dr. Turk and all over the country, uh, you know, donating stuff for me. So, uh, but, uh, and the library, the veterinary library, and that's what uh, you're interested in, mm -hmm. was composed of two rooms. One of them was the reading room, and right next to it was another room, uh, you know, uh, like uh, wh where uh, where Bill Carlton was, uh, his office was in that second room. Uh, but the other, the, the reading room was actually a, 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 a dining room too. They ate their lunch there. <laughs> and it was multi purpose. A, that was a multi purpose reading room, <laughs> you know. Well, anyway, it, uh, uh, it it was much, you know. Uh, what was your office? What was the labs like? The, when I came, the lab I took was uh, uh, a, 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 a graduate student, uh, Martin Stobe, downstairs. Uh, I took that lab, and I also was housed in Dean Andrews' uh, office. He left he left that office and I went to him. You all remember Dean Andrews, yeah. I rec is that Fred Andrews? Fred Andrews. Yeah, yeah. I know. I recognize the name. Yeah. Yeah, uh -huh. yeah. Well, incidentally, his wife is still here. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and Martin bought a house back here. You know. So. Well, anyway. Uh, uh, but this is where I I want to emphasize this that the f the person who developed that that you know one one room. Uh, of library was Ann Kirker. She had done a beautiful, beautiful job. Nobody had uh, had ever done any better job than, than she was her. well trained because she'd been a librarian for quite a while yeah, she, and served she, down in she, the Caribbean. She knew what she was doing precisely, That's and right. she she developed that uh, library very well. That's right. Uh, so all of a sudden, you know, we took. Uh, uh, you know that one, one room, <laughs> and developed it into what is now a beautiful library. You know, right? Uh, like yeah. So Ann Kirker, I I remember her, and she was so helpful yes. in every way to everybody. Yeah. She's a good person. Yeah. yeah. Tell us a little bit about. Um, well, I mentioned earlier that trip that you to South America, and how that came about. Okay. Yeah. Uh, that trip. In South America, I had always wanted to study some exotic diseases. Uh, well, parasitology is involved, you know. Uh, I, th I, I read that they had a, uh, a mission to South America, was four of us, to go to different countries and study uh, what there is in parasitology in their lab. So we started out uh, going to Puerto Rico. We stayed a month in Puerto Rico, studied in the lab there for a while, saw some of the diseases that they have, they have in Puerto Rico and they didn't. That was essentially parasitology, not veterinary or, uh, or medical, you know, just general parasitology. Then, uh, then we went to several other uh, places, uh, 
for a week here and a week there and ended up being a, a three months a visit. It was called uh, uh, parasitologist in South America or, you know, uh, but that's been a long time. I can't yeah, remember yeah, exactly. Right. What and then you said you also told me before we got, you had a sabbatical? Yes. Then I came and uh, came back, you know, and a, a few years after that, uh, they wanted a, uh, uh, I guess, uh, I was assistant professor then, and they, they suggested that uh, I wanted a sabbatical, you know. So that was about like 1960, 67, 68. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to take a sabbatical. During that time that I've been working here all along from 58 to about uh, 67, 68, I have been working on uh, some projects uh, which I needed to get some, some more uh, expert ideas about. And uh, that's immunology of parasitic diseases. And I said, well, why not do it with somebody, you know. So I went with, uh, to uh, NIH and I got a, uh, a fellowship for, uh, I don't know, it essentially improvement of knowledge of professors or something like that. I can't sure, remember sure. exactly yeah. the name of it. They had a name for it. And I got that all right. Uh, so uh, when I went there, uh, they, they, the uh, uh, NIH paid my salary while I was gone, and Purdue University paid half of my salary. You know, so so I ended up not suffering too much with yeah. that. Did yeah. your family go with you? Yeah, my mm -hmm. family went was with me. Was this in, in Washington? Yeah, well, no. In, but in Maryland? Uh, no, no. Oh. I was in London. Oh, you went, oh, the, oh, that's what, oh, okay. I went but to NI, London. NIH funded it. NIH funded that. I uh, went with a doctor, John Turk, who is an immunologist. Uh, he's an MD immunologist and uh, uh, was, w I was working in London. It was uh, all immunology. Uh, and I uh, did some work with skin diseases. It was uh, on skin disease because at that time I was working with, with mange in dogs, you know. So I studied and uh, published a couple of papers for the work that I did there. Mm -hmm. uh, then uh, got back, uh, you know, and, uh, yeah, but one of the things I guess you want to know is uh, how I developed the parasitology section. I told you several people. I brought some specimens, collected other specimens. People from all around the country knew where what's going on, and they sent me uh, specimens, assistance. So I developed the uh, the department uh, and the specimens and all of the materials that is needed there. Uh, one of the things that uh, when I came, see, I came in, in June. Yeah, I came, yeah, I came in June, you know, the, the first of June. Oh, no, the first of July. Sorry, the first of July. And uh, uh, I had to, get everything going in one year to teach the second year because we took the first class in 58. Uh, you know, uh, we went on the interviewing and so on, 58. But then parasitology was being taught the second year, so I had one year to develop the course. W at that time, parasitology was two courses, one in the in the spring, uh, one in the uh, fall and one in the spring. It was six hours. Uh, and uh, 
uh, I had to get assistance, uh, you know, someplace. So finally they let me have a graduate student and my first graduate student was uh, Dr. John Grieve. He got his from here and he was, he went to uh, Iowa State University and he was a uh, professor there for a long time before he retired. Yeah. So that was it then. And, and it went on. on from there, right. Yeah, it went on from there. Yeah. Sure. Uh, and then of course they had the, uh, Lynn Hall got dedicated in what, 1960, so the facilities. Well, it, yeah. Yeah, when, when I came in in '58, right. uh, Lynn Hall was a hole in the ground. Yeah, you know. I'm sure, right? <laughs> you know. Yeah. So it, but it uh, it worked out uh, quite well. Uh, of course, after after the uh, you know after I came here, and the school opened, Lynn Hall was open. Then they wanted to remodel the vet pathology building. So we had to move everything out and to, to, to Lynn Hall while they were working on, on, uh, on the vet pathology building, you know, and back again. So, but uh, we survived that too. One of the things that uh, uh, was interesting uh, that happened was apparently everybody was asked what they wanted for equipment. Uh, for the vet school and uh, they wrote it down pages after pages of 50 of that and 60 of that and 100 of the and so on you know everything and when it came from the companies there wasn't any place to put all of that so they put it in in storage and when the school opened they brought everything at one time everything from microscopes to needles and they put it in that classroom out there nobody knows well somebody knew who ordered what but we couldn't find where it was they just piled it <laughs> and uh, Fred Upper Ray grabs. Uh, uh, Hutchings at that time, I can't remember if it was Hutchings or somebody, appointed me and uh, Fred Racel to see that the people who ordered it got what they wanted. And we had piled up to the ceiling <laughs> of different things. That, it took us about, oh, it took us about a couple, two or three months. Oh, I bet. You know, huh. to just you know first of all find out what all you've got yeah you're right where are you gotten where you want it when you you know and people have forgotten what they, they had ordered you know about right. the, but time anyway, moves on right but it, it, it was quite a fiasco <laughs> just uh, just getting things uh, going that way uh, you um erskine morris was the dean then after hutchins because hutchins i know passed away shortly well uh, yeah. hutchins was one you know, he, hi he who hired me, uh -huh. and uh, then, let's see, he died, he died about a year after I got here. He died about 59 or something. Something, that's what I've read, yes, sorry. There. And then for a while, we didn't have a dean as such. Ed Halterman was acting dean at that time. Uh, and then Erskine Morris came. He was, I think he came to us from Iowa, I believe. That's where he was. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. And uh, he was here for quite a while, right. I imagine. You then have, you Jack have Stockton was the next one after that, wasn't he? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Stockton was there. Oh, well, Stockton was dean when I was in England. Hmm. I think because was he or maybe he was only associate dean at that time I'm not sure before before he got promoted to dean or appointed as the dean uh, he was a, he was a, he was there then he went before he became dean I think he was associate dean okay because well, I'm 
I'm not sure. Don't quote me yeah, on that. Right. Because That's okay. Because he, uh, I kept in, in uh, corresponding with him when I was uh, on uh, on sabbatical uh, in England. He kept sending me letters sure. and I, uh, telling him what I did and so on. You know. Right. Exactly. So. Yeah. Uh, no, another thing uh, I did, and I don't know if it is written there or not. I, uh, the World Bank. Uh, had me go to uh, to Thailand. Uh, I was in Thailand for uh, th three months, working for the World Bank uh, advisor. Uh, I don't know if you had that or not. You know, uh, at, uh, the vet school in Bangkok uh, was having the problem that University of Pennsylvania was having. Uh, the, the small animal people wanted to stay close to Bangkok because it was a big city, you know, and so on. But the people on large animal wanted to go out in the country and they couldn't solve that problem. So uh, the, the, uh, the University of Bangkok, Bangkhan, uh, wanted me to come out there and, and they had some money from the World Bank, you know. So uh, I went there, you know, advising them as to what to do. So it was uh, a nice experience. Yeah, that was quite an experience. Mm -hmm. you know. uh, well, they they used me while I was there too. I gave some lectures out there, you know. Well, they have to build. They have to factor those well, things it's okay. in. Well, you know. yeah, right. that's okay. Yeah, that's all right, you know. So uh, take advantage of your expertise. Well, yeah. Well, so I I did some work there too. You know. yeah. so Were you ever, um, you know, the, the uh, IU School of Medicine, did you ever, we ever did any teaching at the IU School of Medicine here at Lafayette? N no. no. Okay, I usually no. ask, some people have, have been doing it and some have and I just wondered no, if they I, were. I, I never, okay. uh, never taught there, there. Of course it's uh, in the basement of Lynn Hall. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, the, the medical people don't particularly here in Indiana and the north part of the United States, don't know much about parasitology. Okay. But uh, uh, I taught I taught parasitology, uh, of course I taught parasitology in Egypt and, and uh, I taught parasitology at uh, the medical school uh, in, uh, in Libya uh, about three or four times, you see, in Libya. And I taught uh, parasitology, uh, well, I taught veterinary parasitology in, uh, in London uh, veterinary school there, you know, uh, too. I taught parasitology in the veterinary school in, in Baghdad. Hmm. Uh, uh, I was uh, uh, were these yes. long-term appointments, like six months or a year, or uh, did no, it vary? No, no. Uh, it was the, the one in, uh, let's see, the one in London, I was there for sabbatical, so okay. I, t I taught there while I was out. Sure. Uh, the one in, uh, in Bangkok, of course, I was with you. The one in Baghdad was, uh, I think, was supplemented by the United, the United Nations or the World Bank or something paid for it, you know. Uh, let's see, what else, where else did I, oh yeah, I was uh, what they call external examiners in the medical schools. And I did that about three times in Saudi Arabia. And uh, uh, yeah, so, uh, they have, they have, they have a couple of schools in Riyadh. Yeah, t yeah. They have a couple of schools. I was with Prince Faisal or something. Uh, School of Medicine there. I did that uh, about three or four times. Let's see what else uh, I did yes, there. That's very nice. Yeah, it's nice to be asked. Well, uh, they had uh, people you know, what they call external examiners. Uh, they had people from England, they had people from Germany, you know, professors from there, and we examined uh, uh, their students. Uh, what 
we had the written, we didn't have anything to do with it, but what they call oral exam. They had to, uh, to get the students and they sit sure. there and you know, we did that. So, and you do that in about, oh, maybe 15 days, three weeks or so. So uh, we stayed in. Yeah, yeah that's very, that's it was, good. It was interesting. Yeah. yeah. Uh, one of the honors, uh, the World Association of Veterinary Parasitology, you were the president. Can you tell us a little what that organization, are you still in touch with them at all? Or? No, not right now. Okay. Actually, uh, I was one of the very first people to start that organization. Okay. Uh, I was, uh, I started out, you know, from here, and I was going to the World Veterinary Congress, and I had talked, uh, I was president of the American Veterinary Parasitology Association here, and I was going to go for the World Veterinary Congress so I wanted to stop in in uh, uh, in England. Uh, so I stopped to see Dr. Lawson Soulsby. He was professor in uh, in London. No, not London. In uh, what are the two universities? Oxford and in Cambridge. In Cambridge, he was he was the professor there. So I stopped to see him. And we talked about the World Veterinary Association. At that, why don't we start that? We have veterinarians coming in. We have people. So we started that in Hanover. We started. He was president, and I was secretary. And we developed that the World Veterinary the World Association for advancement of veterinary parasitology. And we started it. And he was president and was mm. and I was secretary for several years. Then of course, like usual, once you get a secretarial job, you got it for life, so to say. Or treasurer is also oh, in that yeah, caliber oh, too. So I had it for quite a while. Finally I <laughs> I uh, I decided well I had enough, you know, for it. So I gave it up, and then they decided to uh, to uh, uh, to make me president. You know, so I got to be president. And the reason I had two terms follow, you know, of presidency of the World Association, is because I was president when they had the Veterinary Congress in in Moscow. Now, when I went to Moscow, we didn't have enough parasitologists there to have a quorum. So what, where do I, I'm president, so where do I go from there, leave it after that, and what do I, so finally ended up, they, uh, they wrote me, and they said, well, just stay where you are until we meet again. So we met after that, in uh, in Hungary, in Budapest, that's when I gave it up. See, so that is why when you see a plaque, it say Garford twice, president. <laughs> that was the reason. Oh, okay. <laughs> so that was it. Now the other thing is uh, that uh, the journal, uh, of, uh, it's called Veterinary Parasitology Journal. Uh, uh, the uh, Elsevier Publishing Company in in Holland, as you know, uh, they had an idea. They wanted to have a publication in veterinary parasitology. Somebody, and uh, they went around and they wrote, you know, who should we have as editor for it? And I guess. Somebody sick them on me, <laughs> you know. So they came to me, and I said, "Would you do that?" I said, "Yeah, I would." So we met uh, one time for the World Parasitology Association. Where was it that 
time. I think it was Vienna. I think it was Vienna. The no. Well, and anyway, it was in yeah. Europe, right. someplace. And I met with their manager of Elsevier out there and some people from there and this stuff. So we sat down and said what we were going to do and where and the names and so on. And uh, who would we have as uh, uh, reviewers? And we decided the reviewers. We decided what shall we have as the front page, you know, the, the, the front cover. The masthead or whatever. Yeah. Right. Uh, we, had to decide, we had to decide everything. Finally, got the thing going. Uh, we got a few articles, uh, edited them, and published them. And uh, I remained editor for veterinary parasitology for, I guess, the first 16 or 17 years. You know, I was editor there. Maybe 18 years, I can't remember. But anyway, uh, got that going. It's still going. And as a result, I'm still getting uh, veterinary parasitology for the last tw 20 years. <laughs> and of course, Gretchen would tell you that I, I, I take them to her, you know. <laughs> um, so uh, let's um, so talk a little bit about your family. You have children, and did any of them go to Purdue? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, grandchildren too. Oh, Both. okay. Uh, yeah, I have I have four four children, three uh -huh. boys, and a girl. Uh, my first boy, Joe. Uh, he he went to Harrison High School, and then he got he got the first Lilly scholarship to go to Wabash College. You know, so. That's him, and and then he after that he went to uh, he went to uh, law school, and now he's uh, he became a lawyer, and he is the uh, uh, I guess uh, senior vice president for a bank in in uh, in Indianapolis. You know, uh, my second boy went to Purdue. Wayne, my second boy went to Purdue. Uh, and uh, he went through engineering and got a degree in chemical engineering, but he was, uh, uh, what to call, co-op, he went on co-op program. Right. Right. And uh, uh, he, he lives in, in Phoenix, Arizona. Uh, he works for uh, a uh, what company that makes the... Uh, uh, the electric meters, or uh, you know, the well. Anyway, he works on on that. He has a PhD from the University of Colorado, and he works for uh, uh, in in Phoenix, Arizona. My third boy went to Purdue, uh, and he is a CPA in Indianapolis, you know. So, and my daughter, she went to chemical engineering and uh, got married and now uh, she uh, is uh, in Charlotte, North Carolina, got, <coughs> got married and she had two kids. Uh, but uh, <laughs> it's funny because she was a chemical engineer and she, uh, she worked for about 10 years with the world, oh, not the world, with the uh, uh, Bank of America, <laughs> for some reason. But anyway, uh, those uh, those are so. Uh, three of my kids went to Purdue, and Joe's my oldest boy uh, has a boy and a girl. Uh, the girl uh, went through chemical engineering, and here she's at here at Purdue, and she is working at uh, Evansville, and uh, got married. And uh, her brother, Josh, uh, he went through uh, construction engineering. Uh, and he graduated last year from Purdue. And he's working in Chicago now. Now, my third son has two boys, uh, Christopher and David. 
they're going to Purdue now. They are, uh, one of them is going through hospital administration, Christopher is, and David is going uh, through, uh, I guess, computer science. I guess that's what he is. Good one. Yeah. They keep that tradition tradition going on there. Well, we we have quite a few. <laughs> right. We have support. Uh, for for my research, uh, uh, I had started uh, working uh, in at, at uh, in Dallas, and I uh, recognized the importance of uh, of uh, demodectic mange, which is a very important disease in uh, dog skin. So when I went to Texas A&M and I had applied to get a research grant from NIH on that, and I did. That was about the time that I was coming to uh, Purdue University, opening it. And I talked to uh, Dean Hutchings at that time. I said, would you take me with this or what shall we do with it? He said, well, if they transfer it, that would be great, you know. Sure. So finally, when I moved, I brought that project here, funded from NIH, and I kept it going while I was going here, funded from different sources, from different companies, different individuals, and so on. Uh, and it, it uh, I, I recognized the... Uh, the importance of immunology with uh, demodectic mange, and that is why I took that uh, year sabbatical to study immunology, uh, and I worked with that. So in you London, you went. Huh? It was in London. And yeah, immunology? I worked in London. Right. Uh, with uh, and skin diseases. Right. You know. Right. And I recognized the importance of immunology with uh, demodectic mange. It still is. So that was a, a big project. Then uh, when I came to uh, Indiana, I recognized uh, the importance of uh, pigs to Indiana. And one of the uh, important uh, parasites of pigs is Ascaris, which is a roundworm of pigs. And I worked with that quite a bit, and that uh, led me to a, uh, a lot of work on, on that and well, I got uh, some funds uh, with that too, uh, some projects. And I worked on that. Uh, many students uh, like to work on that. Uh, also, I had a student here, my, my last student, uh, which was uh, interested in, in fleas. So, we worked on fleas for a while. So these are the three things that uh, I worked with all throughout my research. That's great. Uh, That's good to uh, the, the work on, on Ascaris and pigs uh, led me to many other things uh, to study the uh, appetite and why, and why uh, people who have parasites uh, eat more, you know. So uh, it, it was an, an important diversion for me for a while. And we worked a little bit on some, uh, uh, some work on that. You might find a couple of papers on it, you know. So th these are th the main subjects that I studied while I was here, you know, parasites of pigs, and uh, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, uh, demodectic mange. You know. All right. Okay. Good. What are you doing in your retirement? <clears throat> enjoying days each day. <laughs> I am. I am enjoying it very okay. much. Uh, do you do any? Uh, being a member of uh, uh, you know service clubs here. Uh, I'm a member of the Lions Club, and uh, we had uh, some very interesting experi experiences with that. The Lions of Indiana, we collect glasses 
you know, eyeglasses uh, for people, but uh, uh, we can't uh, give away glasses here in the United States because the optometrists and ophthalmologists would object to that. So what we were doing, we were, uh, we we're taking them abroad, see, the lines of Indiana. And uh, I have been uh, involved in that quite a bit. I went on about oh, five or six missions to Central and South America, uh, everywhere from Guatemala to uh, uh, Costa Rica to Panama, to Ecuador, well, you name it, we've been all over, you know. Uh, you actually deliver them? Yeah, well, we, what we usually do, we have about uh, maybe uh, 25, 30 uh, members of the Lions Club here in Indiana, different clubs. Throughout the state? Throughout the state, and we would go take about like uh, uh, 35,000 pairs of glasses and uh, the people come and we measure them and uh, donate glasses to them you know so that's, that's one good. one project that we did and of course you know uh, throughout the year we have other things uh, to do you know to the, to the community uh, one of them i guess the feast of the hunter's moon you know oh yeah right so, <laughs> so we go to the feast of the hunter's moon and we and we cook croconoles uh, you know, those French donuts. Oh, okay. I, I don't know whether you've been there. <laughs> you know, I recognize, I haven't been to the feast uh, in anyway, a long time. Uh, but, uh, you know, we we have fun sure. getting dressed in, you know, voyagers. Enjoying. And, right. Enjoying it, you know. Right. Uh, and uh, I'm also uh, a member of the uh, uh, Masonic Lodge and the Eastern Stars. And... Uh, during the, the Feast of the Hunter's Moon, it just passed, we sell, uh, we sell all sorts of uh, dried vegetables, uh, dried fruit, uh, 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 nuts and stuff like that, you know. We, it's, it's an income for, for the for group. The so that's, so right. that's another thing, you know, I keep doing year after year, been doing that, <coughs> you know. Uh, but it is quite a, a, a chore, you know, uh, buying them, packaging them, selling them, setting up them, and so on, you know, so it takes a... It, it takes, takes a little time. It takes a little time. Right. Uh, so uh, that's, that's another project that I do. Uh, uh, I am also, or was, uh, I'm not now, I gave it up about two weeks ago, uh, the uh, uh, oh, it's a Masonic thing. Uh, I forgot what the name of it is That's now. Okay. Yeah. Anyway, I was involved in it. I was secretary of it. Uh, and, and then what I have been doing, uh, I guess ever since I retired in 1990 or 91, I have been uh, volunteering my time at the home hospital. And uh, uh, I have been uh, doing whatever they want me to do. I've been, you know, meeting people at the, at the door at the home hospital. Is that like the red coat? The red, red coat. Shirt. I'm red coat. That's right. exactly it. Right. I've been red coating and I have uh, about, uh, oh, maybe 76, 70, Seven hundred hours of uh, of work there, you know. So I've been That's doing that uh, three times a week, you know, Monday, Tuesday, and Friday. You know, it's very nice. You know, you get to so meet people, and they get to meet people. Sure. Uh, something, you know, uh, might even meet some you know. <laughs> well, yeah. Uh, well, of course, you know, who we meet and what they are there for is not. To be told to anybody. Exactly. Uh, this, you know, this is that HIPAA uh, Understand. thing. Understand. You know. Yeah. So, uh, but we see an awful lot of people, sure. and we know why they're there. You know. Right. And uh, uh, one of my jobs there is uh, 
carrying medicine from from the pharmacy down below in the basement to the various nurses' stations all over the hospital. You know. That's so you so get you to deliver that. Yeah. Right. So delivery. You know. Uh, so it's some. You know. It's something to do and something that they they would have to hire somebody to sure. do. You know. So. That's right. So we have been volunteering for that. So That's right. Now, in, in closing, any comments that you'd like to share with us? That in closing, I okay. think uh, the library is doing a great job, and I think my memories with, of Anne, Eric, Anne Kerper uh, is very vivid about her. She was a wonderful lady, and I think Gretchen is doing a nice, right. nice job right. after taking over from there. Right. So uh, I, I have uh, very, very fond memories of, of Anne, and I, I think uh, uh, Gretchen is doing a wonderful job here. Right. And I hope to keep on. But of course, you know, now uh, the books are going out of, out of style, and the computers are coming there. in. Yeah. They'll still be there. Yeah. And it's nice that you're able to participate and be around for the 50th anniversary. Oh yeah. You started oh, yeah. before the school really got yeah, up yeah, and running. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's kind of unique. No, that's that's what it is. I came uh, you know, uh, at the time that well, there was not a school here yet, no, you know. No. And now there is. But it had been a, approved and it was yeah. under constru it wasn't the yeah. construction was probably going on. Well, came. They, there was some construction. Some building, yeah. They have they have uh, uh, the the legislature and the Indiana legislature has uh, uh, appropriated some money, but then the next appropriate, the next uh, legislature appropriated the big funds. You know, we had we had some problems and so on. But uh, when I came, you know, I had to, I had to work with Dr. Jerry Getch. He was the one that that had all of the plans and uh, all of the work, and uh, you know, we had. He and I <laughs> had, had had some fights with the uh, with the construction of it, you know, and it still is. <laughs> One funny thing, uh, the the parasitology lab that I had out there, you cannot turn the lights on by switches like that. You had to go to the main, you know, switch box, uh, switch box, to turn the lights on. And I tried to talk the 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 builders to change that, and Jerry and I went and talked. There was no way they were going to change that. So we we had we had some, some little little difficulties. Little there. difficulties yeah. there, but it uh, it worked out fine. Uh, let's see, there was something that uh, came through my mind quick, and I wanted to tell you about. Yeah. Uh, that's okay. You can always add it in when I send you the transcript. Yeah, that's yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah there's a lot of uh, a lot of things that uh, goes into having. Oh, I, I guess you know it. Uh, the first class that we took was all boys. We class of '63. Class of '63 was all boys. I think class of '64. We had either yeah. one or two girls, yeah. One of them was, uh, who was the woman who was a, a Carol Ecker. Leader. Huh? Carol Ecker. Carol Ecker, yeah. She, is, she wasn't Carol Ecker then. No. She, uh, yeah. And uh, she, she, uh, she started, yeah, the second year. I'll tell you something about her. That... He and she and I went around and around. She was interested in horses and still is all the time. She was a member of the... Uh, but anyway, while she was taking uh, parasitology, there was one, uh, one parasite in horses that affects the, the, the uh, aorta, the lower aorta. That was a very severe parasite there, you know. And I was telling her, you know, that this parasite kills horses because it destroys their the uh, the big 
uh, aorta and the branching of, of the aorta in the legs and so and she said Dr. Goffer why don't we have uh, 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 surgery to replace that uh, you know part of the aorta I said uh, well Carol I don't know I'm not a surgeon but I think it would be a very very difficult situation and she, so she had ideas about that, about horses that are very, very important and very good. You know. But that I remember that, and she probably remember that. She was the very first one who said, why don't we get a, 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 a surgery that would take that uh, uh, you know, aneurysm and replace it with something else. You know. <laughs> I said, well, you do it. Yeah. <laughs> and she did, I guess. Uh, thank you very much, Dr. Okay. Gare. I appreciate that.